This is ITV1 in 15 minutes, Premiership action, then Champions League weekly. First the news, including a regional roundup. Where is Daniel? The search intensifies. Twisters ripped through the US, dozens killed. And our man in Baghdad is back as the embassy reopens. The ITV News with Fiona Foster. Hello. The mother of a seven-year-old boy missing since Saturday evening pleaded today for anyone with information about him to contact the police. Daniel Entwistle hasn't been seen since he left his home in Great Yarmouth in Norfolk to go and play. His bike was later found on a quayside in the town near a fast-flowing river. Penny Marshall reports. Local lifeboat volunteers have now joined forces with the police combing the harbour waters of Great Yarmouth. This follows the discovery yesterday of Daniel's bike close to a quayside wall. The area has now been cordoned off, the abandoned bike the only trace, the only clue so far in the search for the missing seven-year-old. Police haven't ruled anything out and their divers working all day have found nothing. We're very concerned. Yes, he, he, we, we understand that he disappeared once before but it was for a period of two hours um, and he turned up safe and well. He's been missing now for over 36 hours. We are very concerned for his welfare. Daniel was last seen by his family on Saturday evening at around 6 o'clock. This CCTV footage shows him in his local shops minutes before, the last recorded sighting of him. He was wearing these clothes when he vanished. Today on the estate where he lives, Daniel's mother appealed for help to bring her son safely home. Ring the police, because you're not wasting the time. They're all there looking for Daniel. They've got people out there now looking for Daniel. Just If you see anything, just ring the police. We just want Daniel home. Please. 2,000 posters have now been distributed. House-to-house -house inquiries away from the harbour are continuing. And as the search enters its third night, police insist it remains a missing persons inquiry. Penny Marshall, ITV News. Rescue workers in America are still searching for survivors after some of the deadliest tornadoes in years flattened towns and left at least 33 people dead. The worst affected areas are the central states of Kansas and Missouri. From America, Robert Moore reports. Okay, Brad, right now we have a tornado on the ground, headed right for Pierce City. It all began as a complex storm system rolling across the central plains. But rapidly it spawned large numbers of deadly tornadoes. We do have a definite tornado on the ground. I'm seeing destruction. Worst affected, Missouri, Kansas and Tennessee, the heart of America's so-called Tornado Alley. Oh my God, there it is, there it is. Oh, look, it's down. huge. Oh, there it is. It's huge. Undoubtedly, many lives were saved by local TV reports that tracked the twisters, allowing residents to reach basements and shelters just in time. But others were overtaken by the speed of events. I'd never heard wind like that before. It was nuts. And I, I was following him out to go to the basement, and I just... I seen it was the front door is gone, so I just dove under the kitchen. Only now are officials trying to assess the damage. Dozens dead, small rural communities shattered, even a freight train blown off the tracks by the violence of the winds. Over the last 24 hours, multiple twisters have touched down, in almost every case causing chaos and leaving officials powerless as they waited for these tornadoes to pass before declaring states of emergencies. Robert Moore, ITV News, in the United States. There are growing calls tonight for a public inquiry into Gulf War Syndrome. It's now emerged that a war pensions appeal accepted that there was a link between a former soldier's illness and the drugs he was given before the 1991 conflict. Other claims could now follow. Here's John Ray. He fought the Gulf War, but Brian Tuzi's toughest task was his four-year fight to win a war pension. His symptoms are baffling, blackouts, brain damage, his bones becoming brittle. He hopes other veterans will now be spared the same struggle. It's set a very good precedent. Now everybody that has uh, a claim in, that claim should be paid. 
on a fact called golf ball syndrome instead of having to do like I did spend such a long time going to different doctors seeing so many specialists campaigners say the cocktail of vaccines given to troops combined with the stress of conflict created as many as 7,000 victims of the syndrome but for the first time a link has been accepted by the war pensions tribunal judging the case of 33 year old Alex Izzet once of the Royal Engineers, who now suffers from osteoporosis and depression. But the ruling could have huge implications, especially as tens of thousands of soldiers are returning from Iraq, having taken the same vaccines as their predecessors. John Ray, ITV News. American forces in Iraq today arrested another member of Saddam Hussein's regime, this time a woman educated in the United States. Sally Amash, known in the West as Mrs. Anthrax, is thought to be the scientist behind Saddam's germ warfare program. She was taken into custody in Baghdad. She's the five of hearts and number 53 in the American military's 55 most wanted list. And as members of Saddam's old regime are rounded up, Britain is preparing for Iraq's next leaders by re-establishing diplomatic links with Baghdad. And central to those links is the British Embassy in the Iraqi capital. Twelve years after being abandoned, it's being reopened at last. Our correspondent, Adrian Britton, paid it a visit. Paratroopers on guard outside the British Embassy in Baghdad as an ambassador takes up residence for the first time in 12 years. I met Christopher Seeger, who was the deputy ambassador, when staff evacuated the embassy at the start of the 91 Gulf War. Technically speaking, this is the British office, not embassy. And he is not yet the ambassador, not until Iraq forms a new government. What's the first thing on your mind? What, what's your first task? Um, what sort of regime we're going to be operating uh, as, the week, as the days go by, as the weeks go by. We're starting an embassy, as it were, from scratch here. I have to work out what time we start in the morning, what time we finish, which days of the week we work, which days we take off, um, and how many locally engaged staff we can, we can re-employ. In 91, they left in haste, leaving behind photocopiers and pictures of the Queen and Prince Philip, now covered in dust, but carefully preserved and protected from looters by Mahdi Alwan, the Iraqi caretaker. So I expect he's going to get some sort of bonus for this, isn't We'll he? give a bonus, yes. Yeah, negotiations will, 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 will take place afterwards. Yes. <laughs> Outside, lorries brought in containers to be used as offices and accommodation while the building's being renovated. It's Britain's first flat-pack embassy. So this piece of British soil has no electricity or running water. Christopher Seeger and his team are going to have to rough it. And that includes army showers. Adrian Brisson, ITV News at the British office in Baghdad. The Labour MP George Galloway, criticised recently about his alleged dealings with Iraq, came under fire again today. He was pelted with eggs at a rally in Merseyside and only his quick reaction stopped him being hit. He carried on speaking, but soon had to duck for cover again. His attacker was said to be angered by allegations of Mr Galloway's involvement with Iraq. And finally, the British yachtswoman Emma Richards is back on dry land tonight, having become the first woman to complete sailings around a lone race. She was given a rapturous welcome by friends and family at the finish line after spending the last eight months travelling 29,000 miles around the world on her own. She said she'd never do it again. And that's the news this Bank Holiday Monday. And you can, of course, keep up with all the latest developments over on the ITV News Channel. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, from all the team here, goodbye. ITV National Weather, sponsored by PowerGen. PowerGen, power in good hands. Good evening now, I do hope that you caught some sunshine today, although for many of us it was cold and wet, and just as we're going back to work, the weather is starting to improve. Although uh, tonight at least wet and windy across uh, Scotland, all as a result of this area of low pressure here. Although further south, some clear slots, a bit cooler than of late, lows of 4, that's 39 in Fahrenheit.
So in towards it tomorrow morning on a fairly cool but a bright note. Still going to have some cloudy, patchy rain up uh, here in the north, although further south for much of England and Wales through the day, we should hold on to that sunshine and it's the brightness that will keep the temperatures up to around 17, 63 in Fahrenheit. Although in the northwest later, I'm afraid some more cloud and rain. Bye-bye for now. Power Gen. Power in good hands.